The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody out there listening to Arm Radio tonight. Thank you for tuning in to my show, All Aboard with Donald Wisman. That's me. Um, this show is being broadcast live from Boston, Massachusetts. And um, I have some wonderful guests on the show tonight. I've got Les Skymo, Dave Coots, I've got Jimmy Bell and Paul Daniels. They also have a show on Arm Radio. It's called Pop Talk. It plays every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a great show. Um, everybody, please tune in to that. And if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself, go ahead, and um, I'll get I'll get going here. Hey, Les Skymo. Hello, world. Hey, guys. Dave Kutcher. Hello, Arm Radio. Paul Daniels, Armed Radio Global. I'm radio. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Bell from Pod Talk, politically offensive talk. Thank you, and um, and like always, um, you guys, I do this every show. I want to send my prayers out to all the men and women serving in our military, past and present. And, and I do have a Facebook group, group, and you're welcome to join. It's called Trump 2020 exclamation point. But don't forget that exclamation point. And also, you can join this Facebook group. It's called Armed radio group news for all the latest updates on armed radio it's a great great group join it and they tell you everything you need to know about armed radio it's a it's a great uh, radio station to listen to i love it they got some good shows they play good music and um on tonight's show um we're going to be talking we're, we're going to be taking some calls tonight for the first time on our show we're there's a 1-800 number you guys and um so I hope everybody's got their got a pencil in their hand or a pen so you can write this down. And um, I'm going to start taking calls about 8:30 tonight, you guys, so we can get a. We want to talk about a few things before I start taking calls. But um, the number to dial dial in tonight is 1-800-508-5431. Just remember um, to turn down whatever device you're listening to when you call, um, so we don't so we don't get a bunch of feedback and. Uh, a, a friend of mine, you guys, sent me this, and um, it's something that Abraham Lincoln once said, and I, I want to read it tonight, if you guys don't mind. It's um, and I'm gonna read this, and I quote: "This is from Abraham Lincoln. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves." Ladies and gentlemen, that day is rapidly approaching. And I believe that, you guys. It's, that's a good saying from um, Abraham Lincoln. And um, I want everyone to know that I don't hate Democrats, you guys. I, I know a lot of them, they love their country. A lot of them, they, they've served in our military. A and a lot of them don't believe in abortion. It's just their ideology I don't like. And the ones that are so far left, they're basically communists, you guys. And, um, well... We, you guys, um, it's time to get this show started, and um, I'm going to start off with this topic today. Um, we had another school shooting this morning at um, Marshall County High School in southwest Kentucky. They said one person was killed, and um, others were wounded. Um, this is so sad, you guys. I mean, things like this need to stop. But but here's what here's what makes me so mad. The media covers these these school shootings. And um, but they why don't they why don't you always hear them talking about places like Chicago where they have the strictest gun laws in the country, you guys? I mean, come on, tell me about it. Um, let's we'll start off with you, Les. Well, it's not only Chicago, man. It's Detroit, it's Dayton, Ohio, it's Cincinnati. Now, not to the degree of Chicago. What well, I uh, said, places like Chicago, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, they're run by liberals. Uh, the media is liberal. Uh, they're, you know, and it's old news. It happens. It happens so much in places like Chicago. You know, I doubt their own local news even reports it anymore, Don. And as far as these schools go, uh, there again, just like anybody else gets shot with a gun, can't blame the gun. Okay, um, but now arm these teachers, 
on the principals. There's a uh, there's a security in some of our schools. They hire off-duty police officers uh, and things like that. But now, uh, brother, I tell you, the only surefire way to slow it down, uh, you have to neutralize the shooter. If a kid has a gun and his heart is set on murder, uh, nobody wants to shoot anybody, especially a kid. But, brother, when it comes to murder, you have to neutralize the aggressor. That's all they are to it. People got to get it through their head. You know, you got to fight fire with fire. What do you think, Dave? Oh, absolutely. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And this is something that I'm passionate about being a concealed carry instructor, uh, you know, in the state of Ohio. And my daughter was actually involved, not involved, but she was she was uh, going to school in Madison Township when they had a, a school shooting. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, people need to realize, you know, you're not going to take evil out of anybody's heart the evil is in their heart and they will find a way to do whatever they need to do whether it be with a gun a knife a stick a bat they're, if they want to hurt somebody they're going to hurt somebody great answer man great answer. what about you what about you paul well once again um i believe the same thing it, 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 if somebody is intent on doing harm they're going to do it no matter how what means they use to do it. And arming teachers and um, the faculty is the first line of defense in something like that. I agree. I, I, I don't like the policies of liberals where they think that if you just ignore it, it'll go away because it's been proven again and again. It's not going to go away if you just ignore it. You only exacerbate it. Well, they ignore the bullying, too. Well, yeah, but I mean, and not to get into a separate conversation, but yeah, but, I mean, but that's the same issue. Well, go well, ahead, I know, you guys. You've got these liberal teachers that they won't carry a gun. No, but you can have teachers that do believe in carrying a gun, or or, or at least, um, uh, for Christ's sakes, the janitor would be nice. Well, yeah, take, exactly. All the volunteers, take volunteers who want to be trained and armed. Couldn't they force and, them? And Couldn't armed. they force the teachers to carry guns on you guys? No, 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 no you no, can't no, do no, that. No, you, you can't I'm, do I'm that. I'm, I'm totally yeah. against But they that. should train them to shoot. Yeah. Well, and being, being a firearms instructor, guys, I can tell you this, that in the state of Ohio, some of our teachers now do carry guns. There are programs in place to train those teachers so that they can be armed, and it, it, it has, it's drastically reduces the chances of a school shooting, They're, you know, a kid getting hurt. Me as a parent, I want my child protected by a teacher with a gun who is trained. Well, you know, it's just like in right. society. You know, my wife, she says, now, I've got a concealed carry permit. I carried a gun for years without a permit. You know, I'm a constitutionalist, but stay out of jail. I jumped through the hoops. Got to, you got to uh, get the license, brother, anymore, but Les. Yeah. Well, you know, Les, I'm going mean, to tell you something. You mentioned Chicago. It wasn't only in Chicago, Les, but um, I want you to know that last year in Chicago alone, just Chicago, Les, 624 people were shot and killed oh, last yeah. year in Chicago, and there was 2,937 people were shot and wounded. I mean, you guys, I know it's happening in all these cities, but they just don't talk about it yeah. anymore. No. Very a word, brother, about it from the All right. liberal media. Time for the next subject, you guys. Let's move on. Um, it's times of man. It time flies by on here for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. But um, anyway, you guys, you guys all know President Trump is signing into law a bill that ended this stupid government shutdown. I mean, it, it's going to provide Congress time to to hammer out this immigration reform package. Hundreds and thousands of federal employees. Went back to work today, you guys. And our president did not cave in. I hear a lot of people out there saying, oh, President Trump caved in. You guys, he didn't. He even tweeted, big win for the Republicans as Democrats cave on shutdown. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I agree with you, brother. And um, I, I'm glad that um, it come to an end for now. It's only good up to, what, February 8th, I think. And... Um, 
but you know it's not over because uh, Schumer Schumer pulled his support, like Dave was saying earlier. These uh, DACA kids they showed up at, on his doorstep. He pulled his support. Uh, One point six billion dollars that he said that he would vote for to give Trump. He pulled that. He's starting to crawl that on it. I knew this would happen. So it's not over. They're going to try this again. They're just going to try to retool it and try to do it so that Republicans will get to blame for it. That's all this is. Dave? That's what they've done this time. They thought, you know, that, hey, if we throw it out there and bait them a little bit, we'll, we'll see what sticks. It's typical Democratic philosophy. They, they throw anything they can up against the wall and see what sticks. You know, then they come up with the Schumer shutdown. You know, people are saying, hey, you're putting illegals uh, ahead of, of Americans. You're putting them ahead of American soldiers, American workers. And people are tired of that. Mr. Daniels? Yeah, um, Brett Hume on Fox News said it best. Um, Schumer got nothing out of the deal and totally caved. It, it was a, a, a absolute um, fiasco for the Democratic Party. Even the media was chewing them up. So, and when you lose the media, I mean, for Christ's sake, what does the Democratic Party have left? Nothing. What do you think about it, Jimmy? I'm not sure what we're talking about. Ah, we're talking ah, about the, Jimmy, why don't you go make right. a drink? No, ah, yeah. The shutdown. Shut the Schumer shutdown. Ah, the Schumer Sharanda. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the shutdown? I mean, they went back and um, now they're blaming, they're saying Trump caved in, Jimmy. Yeah, I know. He didn't cave in. He, he, he stood his nothing. ground. He didn't deal a DACA deal. That, that would it. have been caving in. You guys, Jimmy, and all you guys, I want to know why this DACA deal is so important to the Democrats. Because I mean, votes. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's what votes. I was going to say. Is it is it because these immigrants are is these immigrants are going to vote for them? I mean, they will. There has they to be do it until they become yeah. citizens, yeah. and then they vote Republican. By heart, most Latinos are Republican. But they, they, they don't like, like their illegals. Like you know, Dave said, I, they put they put them ahead of American citizens, you guys, and that makes me mad. And we're going to talk more about DACA later on in this show, you guys. Um, for now, you guys, I'm going to change the subject. I want to talk about this FISA Act, this Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Now, this is something that Dave Coots has been, I mean, he really got mad over this. They are supposed to use this to collect information between foreign powers, uh, you know, that's suspected of espionage or terrorism. Um, this act has been abused, you guys. Um, they have dem they have documents that that has been described as devastating for the Democrats. The content of these documents is being reported as having the potential to bring an immediate end to the special <coughs> counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation and expose many, many officials in the Obama administration. They are saying that the real Obama is going to be exposed. There, there's a lot to this. Um, the Democrats, um, they, they, they don't want these documents to be released to the public, you guys. And there's a reason why. There has to be a reason why. You guys tell me why. Well, I, you know, I, this stuff, I tell you, there's so much of it that's unconstitutional, illegal. Look, okay, for example, okay, you got, I forget how many, you got thousands of employees in the NSA gathering this information they use it to go get the FISA warrants okay and uh i was watching a clip on this uh, uh on uh info wars i was watching this william uh, benny was on there he's an nsa whistleblower he was in the government for three uh 30 years and he said they don't just uh take uh information from foreign sources he said they collect everybody's AT&T helps them do it he said they could blackmail anybody with the information they use and uh, so it's uh, you know when you got that you can't tell me you don't have rogues in the NSA dealing with this information like right. you have rogues in the FBI 
Well, well, what do you, what do Dave now? You was the one that was fired up, Dave. What oh you, man, come on, let's have it. You know it fires me up, man, because this is just—they just trample on our Fourth Amendment rights when they do this crap. You know, it what 2013, Edward Snowden come out with. Yeah, you know, they were they were using it to collect uh, domestic domestic info on, on all citizens. Yes. You know that it was set up in 1978. This was to oversee requests from the government for surveillance warrants against foreign spies. That's what that's what FISA was originally set up for. You know, Benjamin Franklin said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. You do not give up your constitutional rights in the name of safety. It does not work. Amen, brother. I, I, I totally agree with the last statement. I mean, we can't, it, the world is not perfect, all right? You, you, there is an inherent danger with freedom. If, if you want to live in a bubble, go live in a bubble. There's plenty of places that will take perfectly good care of you, but you will surrender your freedoms. I don't like the fact that they're spying. It, it seems like, all right, th th this is what kills me. It seems like the people that didn't do anything wrong are the ones being punished for other people that did shit wrong and they try to say we're doing it for your protection but it's like I'm losing my freedom I didn't do anything wrong and that's how they do that that whole premise is that way when something happens they want to make a law guys go ahead chew it up right. chew it, it up do, you guys no they, it, exactly they're saying we're doing it for your your best interest, right? But when's the last time the government had your best interest in it? Well, it's not so much the Pfizer uh, warrants, it's uh, which was off the dossier, but it's the um, oh, shit. I lost. No, I understand. It's it's what they they used. That false oh, the, the unmasking. To unmask. To See, unmask. You can have, have other you know Americans talking to foreign people, but they're not supposed to unmask who you are unless you got a damn good reason. Exactly. And they didn't have any reason. And, and they were unmasking everyone under the right. guise of of um Pfizer under uh, in the right, dossier. Uh, 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 under yeah, they that they had information that was false right. from the very beginning. It was bad information from the beginning, and, and it's not like they were given bad information they didn't know. They knew it was bad information, and but they see, ran with it anyways. Here's the thing about this, too, uh, fellas, and I agree with everything y'all said, but if the, the, the government can use this information, okay, to start investigating you and... Then they, it just, uh, like a spider web, it goes to every area in your life, just like this special counsel. They will, they will find, find something that they can use against you. Absolutely. And it's totally and You're right. Subject. You're right. And Dave, what was you saying earlier about these cell phones, Dave? You, you brought up a good point earlier when we was talking. Oh, about the not being able to take the batteries out of your smartphone so yeah, they can remotely explain, turn them on. Explain that to everybody. What what's happened here with these smartphones? Well, I mean, well, I mean, look, we've got smart TVs and smartphones now, and the government can turn these things. They can send signals to them and turn these things on anytime they want to turn them on. That's, That's scary. scary. That's scary, you well, guys. And they do it. You know, they can do it with or without a government agency. They and and it's not just. Want. Yeah, and it's not just the government either. You got hackers that can do it too. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? I wasn't even I, thinking about them, Paul. To tell you the God's honest truth, I trust the hackers more. Yeah. You're probably oh, right. Absolutely. Yeah, I trust the hacker more than I do the government. You know. Yeah, what they'll he just wants. steal my money. The government yeah. will steal my freedom. I don't have any money for him to take, but um, <laughs> have, have, <laughs> have we, I don't know if we mentioned this, but uh, I know Dave said something earlier today um, about Schumer backed out on his border wall deal with Trump. Did we talk about this already on this show tonight? I, I don't just, think we have. Just I just briefly touched on it. But he, he backed out. I mean, what was that about? I mean, what? what well, he it? offered to give him seven uh, billion or something, and 1. then when he found out billion. Trump only asked for one point eight, that's what he agreed to, but. Since then, Trump said, "No, we want. I think it was twenty billion, and he says, "Yeah, we're going to give you what you asked for." That's what Schumer said. Yeah. yeah. Well, so he lied. He, he lied. No, he backed Trump, out. 
Yeah, yeah Schumer had out. promised him $1.6 billion that, that he said he would vote on to get it started. And then after this government, after the government fired back up, uh, then he reneged on it. Yes. I mean, he, he just typical lying uh, liberal. I mean, like I said, they're going to retool this and try it again. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's just Schumer knew he looked like an idiot, and he said, well, I'm taking my ball and going home. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. You, got, you guys, um, I don't believe in these polls, but um, there was these polls conducted by ABC News and Washington Post, and um, they claimed that six in ten Americans feel that Trump is incapable of being trustworthy with our nuclear arsenal. What kind of people are, are, are they polling you guys? Yeah, out they're there? polling the lefty loonies because that's what they are. Well, they probably went to the are, women's march and took a poll. Uh, they've been they've been they've been running these phony polls, fellas, ever since uh, Trump announced that he was going to run for president. Right. If people hadn't caught on to these by now, then then they they had got mental problems. Uh, the left wing doing polls on a, on a conservative. Come on, they're phony. I hear music. Yeah, these are the. They, aren't those the same kind of polls that said Trump had no chance of winning the presidency? Yeah, yeah. Same I'm poll. I'm hearing music when Jimmy Jimmy is that you? Can, music yeah, 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 yeah. That's my wife keeps calling. Oh, that's okay. that's okay. I don't care. But um, uh, now these next two topics. You guys, these next two topics are, are about senators from Illinois. Uh, one sen Actually, it's one senator from Illinois and a representative from Illinois. Now, you guys, this state is really blue, Illinois. Um, I don't care if 100 tankers full of uh, yellow paint crashed into Illinois. It would not turn that state green. And I doubt if Illinois will ever turn red, you guys. I mean, you know, you guys know yellow and blue makes green. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but, yeah, um, we, know the, we know the basic color of the Right. Country. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, it is. Yellow and blue makes green, but um, it'll, that state will never be red. But um, in a Saturday speech on, on the Senate floor, you guys, Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth from Illinois criticized Trump, calling him a five-deferment draft dodger, and said Trump is baiting North Korea into a war. Daggone, it just seems like there's just so much hate, you guys. And uh, there, and wait a minute, hang on now. This is this is a representative from Illinois, uh, Louis Gutierrez, a Democratic. Um, uh, representative from Illinois, he declared that Tres President Trump and the Republicans want to end legal immigration, legal immigration to the United States. What planet have these guys been living on? I mean, come on. <coughs> now, Donald, they're, they're known liars. Uh, they say what they want you to believe. And they don't have to talk and huddle with each other. First one says something, the rest of them like they, like a row of ducks. They just repeat the same thing over and over. This this character here, this goody ass, he is uh, he's nothing but a bald faced little tyrannical liar. And uh, I, I tell you what, I hate to, I hate to say that, boys, but the truth, the truth. Uh, this man is a disgrace to Congress, and uh, this Tammy Duckworth, um, you know, I don't know. She's a Rocky War veteran. Uh, she got her legs cut off in a helicopter crash she was piloting during the Rocky War, uh, and, uh, you know, she was shot down, and uh, she was a colonel or a lieutenant colonel. She was a lieutenant colonel. And uh, she said that Trump was a five deferment draft dodger. Trump never done anything illegal. He didn't do anything that, that so many other wealthy people's children done. I, I don't know if she is uh, angry because um, she got lost her legs over in battle. I don't know what her problem is, uh, PTSD or something. But, you know, boy, she's, you know. She's got problems, I think. 
Uh, and we'll, sorry we'll, for. we'll never be able to change change the uh, a Democrat's point of view. I mean, I respect uh, her for her service and and her sacrifice to her country, but you know, I think she's I think she's sadly mistaken. You know. Yeah. I, well, Dave, like I was telling you before, I don't understand how she can go what she went, go through what she went through, come back home, join the Democratic Party after she swore an oath to the Constitution, and and wholeheartedly take on the belief system of the Democratic Party and believe what she does. I don't understand that, brother. That's beyond my comprehension. Yeah, mine too. Do you know what? Maybe it's, it has something to do with the fact that, you know, got engine really bad and stuff, and maybe she's just angry at the world and doesn't know where to direct that anger. And her parents may have been Democrats and stuff, or she just tilted to the exact opposite side of the pendulum. You know what I mean? Maybe she went in believing in, you know, the Constitution and right and wrong and stuff, and she got hurt, and she feels like um, maybe we weren't there enough for her, and, and maybe she's angry and she's lashing out. Yeah, I mean, could be. It's a good point. Um, how do you feel about it, Jimmy? I think that the uh, the kids today are. Uh, and I just lost my trust. You mean kids today have no morals and no sense of direction? They, do you know what? I, I've got grandchildren. No, the kids today are all uh, liberals. That's what I'm trying to say. And then by 30, if you haven't changed to a Republican, then you're crazy. Well, do you know what? I, I, uh, you're yeah. just not logical. You, and, weren't, you were a liberal when you were Yes, I was. I and, voted and you Jimmy changed Carter. Over. Yeah, I That's changed. what I mean. So, but they but, could be the next... I think Great Republican wave. I've been a registered course, Republican, Republican since I was 32. Not even Republican, conservative wave. Yeah, and that's the way a lot, that's the way it seems to trend. Like in my family, a couple of my kids were, I, I, went, well, I would say, lean more to the left, but as they got older, started families, had kids, they've, they've adopted a more conservative viewpoint. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're paying taxes, you see in real life. Yeah, you start paying the bills, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. goddamn right. My my yeah. niece Corey... Trying to make a check last all week. My niece Corey was one of the most liberal people I ever met in my life. We would argue forever. Uh, she is not so liberal no more. <laughs> not yeah. so much no more. Well, you know, your wallet is the first place that it's painful when you're young like that. Um, you know, but I define myself, I try to to find myself as a constitutionalist and I'm an equal opportunity. I just like just real quick here, Donald. NSA supposed to have lost a bunch of stuff on George Bush and uh cause over some warrantless wiretaps. And I tell you what, that kinda of burns me up because uh you know, I don't care if you're liberal or a conservative or or what you are, if you're in a government and you broke the law, you need to be accountable for that. That's right, yep. And that's a big problem. There's no accountability. Exactly. I just want to say something really quick. If um, anybody out there is listening, um, feel free to call in now. Um, we will take some calls. But um, while we're waiting on somebody to call, I don't even know if anybody will even call in. I hope we get a couple calls. But, I might um, get one. Yeah, sure. Um, we're going to be nice to anybody on here. I mean, let me give everybody that number again. It's 1-800-508-5431 if you want to call in. But in the meantime, we're going to still keep talking, and we'll answer the phone, and we'll stop, and we'll talk to you if you want to call in. But um, I want to bring something up, you guys. Um, Oh, Big Mouth Bernie Sanders, he's out talking his crap now again, oh, you guys. Um, <laughs> he, yeah, I, well, I'm telling you guys, um, he said the United States would never recover from the stain of deporting these illegal aliens. He was referring to this DACA Act. Now, right. DACA, now you guys, now this is when I want to little talk about DACA a little bit. DACA was an executive order signed by President Obama. It was, it was illegal. Un unconstitutional jimmy it right. was man and um they you know donald trump what he's trying to do is he's trying to make it legal you guys and he's trying to take out things like the chain migration yeah. and and this lottery system that's not right to our country you guys 
You know what chain migration is, really? Do you, do you really know they're what chain families. migration is? They get to come yeah, in. Yeah. So uh, for every one person that comes well, in. Well, the 600,000 of the um, DACA dreamers, they get to bring in their family. And the average is at six or seven people. Per, yeah, exactly so you, right. you multiply 680, you know what I mean, times seven? And that's agree. what you're going to have. In, uh, and who do they bring in? Their mother, their father, their grandparents. They come over here and instantly go on Social Security. They never put a dime into it. Jimmy, yeah. you just you yeah. just said exactly kind of what I was going to say. I mean, you hit it, you I nailed it. Jimmy. I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, just like I Jimmy think. said, um, people are more likely to move where people they know live, you guys. Now, yeah. like Jimmy said, multiply that by thousands and thousands of people. Um, the numbers are just going to keep growing, you guys. And yeah. I, I, we, our country, we don't need that many people in our country, you guys. We just don't. Well, no, and, and especially uh, Latinos, they have big families. Yeah. Well, see, they bring as many as 30 or 40 of their family members in here. Right. Place. When yeah. it's all let, said and done, yeah. Yeah. Let me read this to you real quick. Florida, uh, Trump won Florida with 29 electoral votes. Electoral votes. All right. Went for Trump in 2016. By a margin of 113,000 votes. That's how many votes he won Florida by. Alka voter plants will reverse this by 2020 by adding 250,000 Democratic voters to the roster. Right. So what they're trying to do. He ain't going to give in the amnesty. I'll guarantee you that. Well, what they're trying to do, guys, is they're trying to steal the electoral college. Is what this is all about. Right. And uh, you know these, these these DACA kids are not kids. Uh, like Dave said, you know the average age I think is twenty five. <laughs> less. Less. That's what I was going to tell you. There yeah. was data. This was four years ago. Data from the U.S. government then done back in twenty fourteen says that a majority of these dreamers are twenty five to twenty six years old. That yeah. was four years ago. So here's the thing, you guys. Here's the whole thing I got uh, against this dreamer stuff. Now listen, if they've been here this long in this country. Why? Why haven't they went? And Jimmy answered, I think he answered it one night, that they was afraid. But they shouldn't have been afraid under the Obama administration. Why did they not go and become a legal citizen of this country while Obama was president, you guys? Eight years. Eight years he was president. Yeah. I don't think they would have deported him. They would not have deported these, these, these dreamers while Obama was president. So why didn't they become legal citizens when they had a chance? They're waiting on amnesty, brother. Yeah, but that that's, that amnesty less is not fair to the ones that came no. here that come here legally. I, I welcome that. I welcome any immigrant that comes here the legal way, you guys. Right. And like me and Dave was talking earlier, you guys, and um, what we was talking about is people that come that do come to our country legally. That, you know how we welcome them. But the thing is, it, it's fine to bring your pride with you from the country you come from. You know what I mean? The pride you have with your country. Yeah. But you, you can't come into America and fly your country's flag. You always have to fly the American flag above that because we do have a flag code in this country. The only thing is, you guys, <laughs> it, it's called, um, to me, it's called, and I think we was talking about it last week, assimilation. People are not... They're not coming here to assimilate anymore. They're they coming here to learn just, the to language. Use, just to use Americans' money, uh, Jimmy. You're right. Bunch of leeches, brother. Here's, here's how I feel about it. You don't burn an American flag, flip off our reporters. You don't uh, riot in the street and, and cuss our government, cuss our country, and say, down with America. And get my support, brother, to to be a citizen. If I had, if it was in, it was my power in my power, I would gather them people up. I'd put them in trucks. They'd be hauled to the border. And they'd be thrown out, and, and they better not come back. And next time, maybe a prison camp. That's how hard I am against it. Now, if you want to be an American citizen, okay, you can be a Mexican or you can be whatever. All right, but you fly the American flag, you love this country, and you support this country, and you support our laws. 
Other than that, you get your goat smelling hind end out of here. That sounds hard, but brother, that's how I feel about it. We, we got to be hard. We got to be hard yeah, now. But when they arrest him at the border, they take him into jail, and then yeah. from there, Obama would release him in the public. Well, sure. Now I they think we're sending him back to the border. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I tell you what, if you want, if you DACA kids want to become American citizens, all right, you join our military. Or you get you a good education, you assimilate, you fly the American flag, you there love you this country, and then I'm all you support far. this country, you learn the language. No. Otherwise, get out of here. No, as long as they assimilate. No. You know, I, I, we I, educated them. You, you guys are here one day. And you come I, back and you go through the process like everyone else had had to. You're right. You're right. That's another you know, way to if do you, it. If you, if you do that, if you do that, if you say to these DACA kids, all right, as long as you assimilate, right, you're right. going to get to the front of the line, every single person in Mexico is going to go, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run right across the border, I'm going to join the military, and I get in. Well, you got to join the military, you know what it's saying. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, Dave, Dave, on this. Dave, what have you been trying to say, Dave? You've been trying to get in there. What was you going to say, Dave? I, I mean, the the thing is, some of the stuff that I've been reading that, sh that says that about 49% of those DACA, DACA kids don't even have uh, high school diplomas. Right. So they're, they're nothing but a strain on our system right now. Exactly. They're no, not helping. Yeah. They're not I assimilating. Love I mean, you guys are coming up with excellent points. You guys really Most of are. the DACA kids are MS-13. Yes. A lot of them are, yeah. And I, mean, a... I mean, guys, if you look at it like this, if your parents sneak you into Disney World and you, and you get caught and they kick you out, is it, Disney, is it Disney's world's fault or is, your, is yeah. it your parents for bringing Ooh. you there in the first place? Exactly. You, you, can, you can't... Um, if you want to get pissed off, get pissed off at the parents. You can't keep importing unskilled yes. people that do not want to become Americans. Right. They want to turn our country into the shithole Mexico. they left. It's We're they being invaded. Up. Well, see, I wouldn't have a, no problem at all if they gathered them up. Just like you said, Dave, you know, if they snuck in Disney World, they throw them out regardless. Okay, I don't ha if that's the way this turns out, that's fine with me, brother. That was a good point, Dave. I, I yeah. like that analogy um, yeah. about Disney World. Great analogy, man. Well, um, you know, you know the, here, here's the thing, though. These these parents, they brought those kids here. And so, uh, you know what the media is going to do? They're, go they're going to portray, you know, mothers and fathers being ripped away from all oh, yeah. the kids that they're having now. But what I want to show is every month them getting assist you know government assistance and it and it and it tax on our system to death it is build, no doubt about build it. the wall <laughs> send them home let them let them come over and do it the right way yeah. it's not fair to the people that are standing in line that are trying to do it the right way you remember when obama made a commercial in mexico saying go to america and get on the door uh, do i don't remember that but, that's like horrible. That, but it, he did that they had Announcements. What do you call them there? A a PSA. PSA. Announcement. Yeah. Here's, there, there, well, here's do you know what? Here's the ultimate example. If I get caught selling coke, let's say I get caught selling cocaine, I got ten kids, right? Right. They're gonna throw me in jail. They don't worry about separating my family. They don't care about Paul yeah. Daniels, do they? No, no they don't. No. That's or true. Jimmy Bell, or Dave Coots, or Les Sky Mo. Do you know what? True. And here's even a do you know what? Even a better example. Um, just say you know you and your wife are having trouble. All right, you know things aren't going so good. And you got kids, and, and your kids aren't going to school every day because you guys are having trouble and stuff. Right? Child Protective Services will come in and rip them fucking kids away from you, oh, even though you're not bad. Even though you're not bad parents. You just hit a glitch. You know what I mean? You just had a bad spell. A they don't give a big shit. Big brother jumping in. But they the don't give is, a shit about separating a family then. Putting them in a foster home where they, they're probably going to get raped or something like that. They don't give a abuse. shit about that, do they? <laughs> and that's they're the poor. thing. Big big government don't care to do it to us as American citizens. But as an illegal, 
they think they have more rights than we do. And exactly. They have, they have, they have rights. none. They're treated with kick gloves. Well, we get the heavy hand of government. Hey, did you guys see that California just said that it will start punishing citizens for reporting illegals? Yeah, I heard something yeah, about that. punishing businesses. <laughs> oh, my God. It, what what has happened to our country, you guys? They can't I mean, do so it. The only left they think they the further the left they go, the better it is. First of all, they're they stepping on themselves. It. First of all, laugh at that law and do it anyway. You guys, I feel like crying because nobody's calling in my show tonight. Nobody wants to call. I'm going to cry, man. Come we on, never got I anybody to call on our yeah, show. You, That's why we, we gave never it up. Either. You want Come to call on. in, Donnie? Yeah. Uh, no, call in? you're already on here, Mr. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Put that uh, turns calling in. All right, listen. Anybody from the United Sheepdogs of Ohio... Come on, give us a call. Don't be embarrassed. Come on, you're only talking to the world here. But anyway, you guys, I wanted to tell you, I, I want to tell you, that I want to go back to Bernie for a minute. You guys know that Bernie's an independent, right? I mean, yeah. You, you want my opinion why he's an independent, you guys? Hey, I'm, yeah. getting, a, I'm getting a call. Yeah. I am getting a call. Last call. All right. Yeah. Let's do this. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the 1 800 line, you guys. So, yeah. uh, well, the Joe. Frank, <laughs> Hang on, you guys. To accept, press one to it's a collect voice. call from jail. Bring it right up to the mic. This is this is uh, Donald Whispering from All Aboard. Can you tell us your first name and what state you're calling from? First name is Chris. Calling from Louisiana. Hey, Chris, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, what would you like to What Look. would you like to say tonight on our show? Um, you want to talk good about President Trump, or would, do you want to dog him? I ain't dogging him. Um, um, you know, I'm an on Trump supporter. I mean, he's doing a good job. You know, so far he's doing he's doing everything what he was he's doing everything what he's been saying he was going to do before he was elected. I agree with that. But um, but um, what he says about I want to hit on something y'all were talking about earlier about these school shootings. Go ahead, you guys. Talk for a minute. Go ahead, Chris. Dave, uh, you got you, uh, Chris. You there? Go ahead. What 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 do you want to talk about the school shootings? Hello. Are you there? We can hear you, Chris. Go ahead. Okay, I want to hit on what y'all was talking about earlier about these school shootings. Okay, um, I got three kids that three kids that goes to school. Okay, um. I mean, I don't know what's going on with this world today. I mean, with all these school shootings back to back, like it's been doing, this won't happen in ten years ago. I mean, as a father and as my wife, as being them, <clears throat> you know, we are, you know, we're scared to death to send our, you know, to send our kids to school now. I mean, I mean, Chris, Chris would you feel I wish safe? I would come up with something. You know, I know. Would you, know, you feel with safe? Town, in, with that school shooting there, I mean, that's been a long time ago. They still ain't got nothing in plan. Would you feel safe? I mean, why not? Would you, you know, why not lock the doors? Why, why not lock the school doors? I think they, they do, Chris. Bulletproof. Hey, Chris, can I ask you a they question? Put, can you hear Dave when he's yeah. talking to you? Can you hear Mister Coots when he's talking to you? No. Well, hey, turn speak. It, Chris, turn it would you, Chris, would you feel safer if your kids? Uh, school administrator. I can't hear anybody but you. He said he can't hear you, Dave. I don't. Chris, you're gonna have to turn up your radio just a little bit where you can hear it, or whatever you're listening to, just where you can hear Dave. All right, I, I can Chris, hear you just fine. Chris, would you oh. feel safer if your school administrators were? I got armed? my phone all the way up. Asking He's, that, Donald. He, um, Dave. Donald, know, he can't hear none of us. The only one he can hear is you. You have to translate it, uh -oh. too, brother. Okay, Dave. What, hang on, Chris. I want to ask you what Dave uh, is asking you a question. Dave, what was your question again? Ask him if he would feel safer if his school administrators were armed and trained. Uh, Chris, Dave wants to know if you would feel safer if your school administrators were armed and trained. Yes, I would. That would, you know, that would um, ease, you know, ease our minds off of this. I mean... As a parent, you know, you shouldn't have to be afraid of sending your child to school. That they you know, they'll go to school to get an education and not for some nutcase to go in there and start shooting, you know, shooting people up. I agree I mean, with something you guys. Got to be I agree with him. 
No, uh, absolutely. Any I think if the administration picked up arms, nobody would bring a gun to school. Something has to be done about this. I mean, it's been going on too, you know, too long now. I mean, too many kids just died. How far government to do something about this? Well, well, Chris, everybody can't hear you, Chris, but I'm going to tell you, you brought up a good point tonight. We was talking about it earlier, and um, I think President Trump. Is it's going to get things changed, and like Dave said, I mean, we can't force it on the teachers, but we do need to get some no. teachers carrying in these schools, packing weapons, and know how to use them. God, here's here's the thing. That's guys. true. A, a lot of. I mean, uh, I'm not uh, saying we got to force them, but I think it needs to be, um, you know, put something in play. I mean. You're right, Chris. But Chris, we're gonna let you go because nobody else can hear you. All right, man. Um, thank you for calling. Um, it, thank you for calling in, Chris. Thank you, yeah. thank you um, Chris. Thanks, every, Chris. Everybody's thanking you, Chris. I know you can't hear him. I wish you could have heard him. We would have had a better conversation. But uh, maybe next time uh, we'll figure out how to. All how right, to, man. All right. Um, uh, thanks for calling. All aboard with Donald Wisman, buddy. All right, man, buddy. Bye. Right, bye, bye. See, he's got, he's got a great point there, Donald, because, uh, but see, you can't leave it. This is a local government thing. It's not a federal government thing. Uh, this is where the federal government needs to, to get its nose out of the local uh, um, people's business and well, allow the parents and the school districts to get together and spearhead something um that I'm getting another call, you guys. <clears throat> you guys, right, I, I'm getting it. another call here, so let's um, let's nice. take it here. That's all right. Well, let's don't take care. Call for Hang on. extension five to accept. Where I got hit? Don, they can't hear us. We can hear okay. them. Okay. Um. Hello, and thanks for calling all aboard. Can you tell me your first name and what state you're calling from? My name's Bernie. I'm calling from Ohio. Well, hello. Uh, what's on your mind tonight? Okay, so the last stuff you were talking about, the school shooting? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so from a kid's point of view who has been through school shooting and had to deal with all the effects and kid listen, to listen and all that stuff, I feel like I would be much safer and I would feel a lot safer if all of my teachers, administrators were armed. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, you're you're a very smart you're, you're a very smart girl for thinking that way, and that's the way I think. And um, actually, um, the rest now you won't be able to hear um, everybody talking, but um, if they say something to you, I'll I'll translate it to you. Can you hear him? If they say yeah. something, see if he can hear you yeah, guys. We, I, we can hear her. Yeah, Donald, ask her uh, what, how long ago that she went through this. How long ago was it? Um, tell me your name again. I forgot your first name. Birdie. Birdie? Well, Birdie, um, they want to know how long ago it was that you went through this. It was my eighth grade year. I'm a sophomore oh, now. Eighth grade. Now, um, what happened exactly at your school when you was in eighth grade? Uh, there. It was during lunch. There was a kid who had yeah, pulled a handgun out of his lunchbox and started shooting at kids. And did anybody get killed, Birdie? No, but there were four kids that got injured. Oh, was, it, was it right here in the state of Ohio, Bertie? Yeah, it was uh, Madison. In Madison, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry to that. hear. I'm sorry to hear about that, Bertie. And um, hopefully, hopefully, let's just pray to God that something will be done. And like, like, like Dave and everybody says, if we could get some administrators of these schools and some people packing guns, the teachers, and get them trained, Bertie, hopefully this stuff will end in America. Well, Donald, ask her if, that's, <clears throat> if she's traumatized from that today. Does she have to right. go to school today because I've got to, of that? Can you hear them talking, Bertie? No. No. Okay. Um, they're asking, um, my guests are asking you, are you still traumatized today over what happened to you when you went to school? Are you I wasn't actually, like, there during the shooting. I had left about ten minutes before. But, yeah, there, there for a while I was. Well, you know, I feel sorry for you, Bertie. I really do, and I hope things get better, and um, America will fix itself, Bertie. I do believe in America. 
there's nothing that America can't can't fix, and I do believe that, Birdie. And I want to thank you so much for um, sharing your story with us here on All Aboard. Thank you, Birdie, for calling. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to our show, Birdie. Um, I appreciate you um, tuning in. Have you been listening to our show for very long? I'm sorry, do what? Have you been listening to our show for very, very long? No, not really. Okay, well, tune in. Um, we have the show every Tuesday night, um, 8 p.m. We run it from 8 to 9. So, Bertie, uh, tell your friends and family to tune in to All Aboard. And um, we talk good subjects every week. So uh, keep listening, Bertie, okay? All right, I will. Thank you, Bertie. We'll talk to you some other time. Thank, thank you, Bertie. Thank you for calling in. Everybody thank says you, Bertie. thanks, Bertie. They're all telling you thanks. Thanks. Bye, Bertie. Bye. Bye. You guys, that just goes to show, it, that tells me that it does traumatize people, you guys. She said sure. she wasn't actually there, but she was traumatized <coughs> by this. I mean, well, yeah, it, 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 it's yeah. going to it's gonna traumatize people. And the thing, and the thing is, the liberals, they, their solution to it is just to completely outlaw everything. That's not the solution to the problem. That's yeah. not freedom, Dave. You guys, I agree. I'm, Add I'm a gonna, law on top of a law, it'll solve something. Uh, Dave, what was it, or, or, or Les, I don't care, um, what was it? What was that first part of our Constitution about the pursuit of happiness? What was that? Life, life liberty, life, and the liberty pursuit of, of, happiness. of happiness. Pursuit yeah. of happiness. Guys, not one American deserves to, to have to be scared of where they live for, like, if there's illegal immigrants living in their neighborhood or crime. Right. Any American has the right to happiness, and I think it's wrong, you guys. I think everybody should be packing guns. I, I hate to say that. Um, like the Wild but, West. They should it, be doing it all over again. Well, well, he's a very look respectful look at, public. Look at it this way, guys. We protect our, our politicians with guns. We protect our money with guns. We protect everything with guns except our most precious commodity, which is right. our children. Oh, yes. my God. I 100% agree. God 100% bless you for saying agree that, on man. That. Yeah. That was, that's pretty good. I like that. I mean, we're, we're not protecting our children in our country, you guys. It's well, a shame. You know, it's not. Uh, there are certain situations where, like in school, the government, the local government, should assume the safety of our children. We assume, you know, we trust them with them, our children. However... Uh, when we're out and about as adults and we're going about, it's up to us to protect ourselves. Our yes. personal safety is our responsibility. Now, when we send our children to school, even to church, you know, send them. To, a lot of people don't go to church, but they'll send their children to Sunday school. Okay, I feel like it's my responsibility if they come to my church to protect those children. And you're right. That's right. right. They're under your good graces. Exactly. And the schools are no different. Well, no I'm different. being, I'm being, and, and not right to now. mention, we pay these schools a huge amount of money to yes. make sure our children are safe. Yes. You're right, and but you guys, um, I, I told you before that I joined this organization, and it's, and it's Dave, it's Dave's organization, the United Sheepdogs of Ohio, and, and Dave is training me. You guys, um, uh, I'm 48 years old, and I'm still learning. So I think everybody needs to learn how to shoot a gun. Everybody needs to learn how to defend themselves in this country. I mean, it's just the way our country's changed. You guys, it's, you used to do that in high school. Do you be able to yeah. learn how to shoot a gun? Yes, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. They got rid of guns everywhere. What? When I was a little kid, even ROTC, um, and uh, here in Massachusetts, well, here in Massachusetts, we had a gun safety course in my school system when I was a kid. Really? In one of the one of the most liberal states. I never country. did. I never had one. We did. I'm from Mass. We and did. We had the, we had the police me. come in and that's, show you. And that's what's that's what's changed the whole philosophy of guns has changed and we've let the liberals they're do that scary, they're scary. You scary shouldn't have yeah. one they're, black, used to have they're metal yeah. I mean, yes 
There was you know, another thing. We, you used to compete with other schools. Right. Yes, you did. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in Eastern Appalachia, Kentucky. They they were gun racks in the parking lot with yeah. rifles. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that's the same way it was when I graduated, when I went to school in Florida. It was just a little log in town, a little nothing. But uh, high, every high school kid had a pickup truck and a gun rack with guns in the back of their truck parked we, in the parking lot at school. You guys, I want to bring up another topic. We're getting down to two minutes, you guys. Um, a couple oh, minutes shit. here. Um, how come the news never talks about the war still going on in the Middle East, you guys? Um, have, have they forgotten our men and women serving in the military that are over there in some of these Middle East countries? Because the U.S. Air Force, I don't know if you guys know this, the U.S. Air Force has deployed um, A-10 Thunderbolt jets to Afghanistan for the first time in three years to provide... Um, close air support for the U.S. troops. So something must be going on over there. And I know, Dave, you, you came from there, um, and they said it's been a while since this happened. What do you think's going on over in Afghanistan right now? Well, I, I know uh, I read an article earlier that said they just, uh, during the government shutdown, they killed 150 ISIS fighters. So they, That's maybe, cool. That's maybe, good. That's maybe, good. That's a good thing. Maybe they've got, you know, maybe they've got some more ISIS strongholds and stuff that they're dealing with, and they need some close air support. For well, the you know, that uh, there's 43. Uh, or, um, hey, you guys, uh, I hate to break in, but we got our 20-minute warning. We're going to have to wrap the show up. I'm sorry, Les. I hate to break okay, in we'll on you. Okay, we do it next But uh, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to everybody, then you guys can. Um, my name is Donald Wisman. Um, I am the host of um, All Aboard with Donald Wisman. Um, thank you, um, everybody out there, for tuning in tonight. I hope you tune back into my show. We've got it, we're just now getting started, you guys. Um, one hour isn't long enough. God bless you. God bless America. Now, let's, Dave, you guys go in order. Say goodbye. Hey, good night. God bless you. Thank you for listening. God bless America. God bless our president, President Donald J. Trump. Hey, good night. Good night. All right, we got to go. Goodbye, everybody.